Yeah, good afternoon, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Okay, so um been playing around the last couple of days with the RF preamplifier for the, the power amplifier stage. Um, been looking at the NE592 uh, and just wanted to uh, do a video looking at that and sort of where I got up to and, and what I'm currently thinking. So in terms of uh, what I am thinking, um, as was suggested in some comments from the previous videos, I'm looking at using the NE592, it's a, it's a video amplifier. Um, it's got differential outputs, and then looking to have that drive directly a, uh, a push-pull amplifier. Uh, it's my currently thinking these um, are the LD MOS devices that I got in. Uh, looking at using those in, in a push-pull configuration. So in other words, um, having that, the output of the 592 going straight in through some kind of impedance matching circuit. Um, so the big picture, uh, that's what I'm thinking about doing. So, um, incidentally enough, those uh, those any 592s I, I purchased those from China, from AliExpress. Um, I bought a lot of five for a princely sum of New Zealand four dollars fifty. Uh, inter interestingly, uh, three of the five that turned up were dead on arrival, um, which caused a bit of confusion when I was trying to make the circuit work, and uh, I was getting nothing out. Um, so in the end I sort of started substituting in what I'd purchased and like I say two of the five work the other three are gone so but again for four dollars fifty total uh, it wasn't such a big outlay okay so the, uh, the NE592 is designed um, to run with a, um, a dual power supply uh, the spec sheet talks about a maximum of plus eight and minus eight volts for that particular device um, I'm going to run that single-ended um, so I'm going to run what was would be the negative um, VCC rail there straight to earth and then the positive one I'll run because you know I'd have an allowable of 16 uh, volts I'll run it at 13.8 so in other words the same voltage um, for the rest of the circuit uh, so that'll be through a 100 ohm resistor uh, and again some decoupling capacitors there now um, Udo uh, D, um, DL2 uh, Yankee Echo Oscar um, has got some interesting uh, information on the internet about his use of the 592. Um, the spec sheet wasn't very helpful at all in terms of running this with a single-ended power supply, um, but his website uh, had some useful information in terms of, uh, in this particular configuration, um, running the two inputs at half VCC uh, as a way of biasing it that way and then providing our input. So that's essentially what I've done here. So we've got a, uh, a coupling, uh, input coupling uh, transformer there. I just want to make sure I'm sort of covering off on uh, what I wanted to cover off on. Uh, and so DC wise, um, it's half VCC, so two, two 10k ohm resistors there between earth uh, and the VCC point there. Half of that through a 4.7k ohm resistor, just to minimize the, uh, the base current that's coming out of those two input transistors. Um, of course, that uh, RF or the um, the secondary of that transformer from a DC point of view is just a straight earth, uh, no, not straight, it's a straight short, I should say. So uh, whatever's seen there is also seen there, which is now being applied to both inputs. Um, now, so the preceding stage is that um, RF antenna amplifier, which is now uh, acting as a, a pre driver for the the power amplifier stage. Uh, its output is at 50 ohms. Now the spec sheet for this talks around, talks about 4k ohms as an input impedance for the NE592, but it, it says that is with the two gain inputs, which is pins uh, 7 and 2, shorted together. Now I'm not running it that way, um, I've got a 50k ohm pot in there, which we'll look at in a sec to adjust the gain. So the spec sheet unfortunately didn't provide any information on that. So for, for test purposes, um, I've just assumed around 5k ohm. So that gives us a uh, an N a turns ratio of square root 5,000 over 50 or 10. Uh, so I'm going to use just 2 to 20. Uh, 20 turns makes it a bit more manageable. And that'll be on an FT37-43, uh, which we'll see. Uh, right, so that's the input signal that gets applied to uh, the inputs, 
And then on the output, uh, differential output, that I'm just taking through to uh, 100 nanofarad capacitors. And then through test, um, the output is sitting across to 1k ohm resistors, which then is being scoped. Uh, in that particular configuration, and we'll see on the scope there, getting around um, 30 dB gain with the input at 0.14 volts. So 0.14 volts aligns with what that antenna, well we'll call it the RF preamp, uh, pre-driver, is putting out um, at max sort of voice going into the radio, into the microphone. So that's where that 0.14 volts there comes input. Right, so that's the um, configuration of the amplifier. Um, and I don't think there's anything else I want to cover off on there. So we've got a 50k ohm pop, which we'll look at in a sec. Um, and as I say, uh, I haven't put any real thought into um, the second stage amplification around those two LD MOSs, but this is pretty well what, what I'm thinking about doing. Um, so I need to put some thought into what T2 will do, needs to be, um, and then we'll see how things play out. But that's, that's the current thinking. Um, and I'll probably just leave it at that for now. So looking at the actual um, test setup, so, uh, and I'll zoom in in a sec, um, we have the 592 there, let me just come forward a bit, and hopefully this will stay in focus, excuse me for jerking the camera around a bit, um, that's probably close enough I think. So um, that's the 592 there, um, that's between pins 2 and 7, that's the uh, external resistor that um, uh, you can set the gain for that particular device. Uh, the input transformer there, the FT37-43, uh, it's just a, um, a junk box um, coil that will transform the a head lying around. It just incidentally had 20 turns on one of them, so I just decided to, to throw that in, and then uh, two turns on the primary, so that's the earth there, and then our SIG gen coming in uh, with the 0.14 volts uh, at 7.1 megahertz, so halfway through that uh, 40 meter band. So that's coming in. Um, we can see there the two 10k ohm resistors between VCC and earth, and then that 4.7k ohm resistor feeding that to uh, both inputs um, of the 592. Uh, the outputs there. Uh, pins 4 and uh, 5 uh, through a 100 nanofarad capacitors and then being dropped across two 1k ohm resistors uh, and then um, those being scoped. Uh, and that's what we can see up on the screen there. Hopefully it'll come through. So uh, just overlapping those, we can see there the, the differential output. So 180 degrees out of phase, um, which will be very nice just feeding that straight into um, that second push-pull amplifier to drive that. Um, I'm just going to vary that potentiometer. So that's a 50k potentiometer. And we can see some gain reduction there. So at the moment, uh, just a bit of a... Uh, where's that trigger? Um, by increasing the resistance, so I'm up around 50k now, it doesn't... So I'm moving that and it's making no reduction. Uh, that turns out to be a minimum gain of 18 dB and then as we reduce that resistance we can get up to, and if we go too far we start to overdrive a bit but if we come back to uh, our most linear or maximum linear portion uh, that turns out to be 30 dB so 30 dB actual gain there with that uh, 0.14 volts coming in so, um, and we'll just have to see how things play out in terms of how well that uh, drives that LD MOS based push pull amplifier as a secondary. So we'll see how things go there. Um, uh, I think that's probably all I was going to cover off on actually, so I can't think of too much else. Um, uh, had to work out what the impedance matching is going to be between this stage and the next stage. Um, I'm not entirely sure what else I particularly want to do with this one actually. Uh, I can't really increase, in fact I'll just, I'll just demonstrate that actually. I'll go back to here. I'm just going to crank the voltage up, at the moment it's sitting on 13.8 volts. Um, and I'll just bring that up a little bit further and we can see. Um, so not a huge difference there, is that sitting on 15 volts, 15 
and then it's sort of maxed out there at 15 volts. Not a huge difference. Let me start to drop it down. We're now at sort of 10 volts. Um, and I'll just adjust that gain there. Trying to overdrive it, so I'm just reducing the gain there. Uh, we're now down to 5 volts there. So I'm still getting some useful amplification. Um, and that should be around 18 dB there. So back up to 13.8, which gives us the ability then to increase the gain a little bit further up. So, uh, take it or leave it. Right, so, yeah, so like I say, um, I'm not quite sure what else I really want to play around with this actually. Um, I'm quite happy to leave that transformer at two turns to, um, two turns to 20 turns. Um, while we can get a little bit more, slightly more, gain coming out by increasing the input it's, it's not by much so uh, I'm quite happy just to leave that as it is um, uh, based on 50 ohms at this end and that sort of assumed 5k uh, on the input to that 592 seems to work out quite well so I'll just let sleeping dogs lie there as they say um, and as just mentioned before I had to put some thought into uh, what the input impedance is going to be for those two LD mosses and then some kind of matching um, circuit to, to match uh, the output impedance of this um, through to uh, what we're seeing on the LDMOS so uh, that'll be the next stage. Um, any questions or comments um, sing out more than welcome to, uh, to have feedback and uh, we will continue playing with this and um, we'll see where we end up. Okay cheers all and uh, 73s.